Apple released their 10.2 inch iPad about a week ago and I've been using it as my daily driver. And I think this is really gonna be the default computing experience for many people moving forward. Even though the tablet doesn't offer a significant spec bump from the sixth generation iPad, it's still largely, I think it's, it's gonna be a great tablet for a number of reasons. One, because it's $350. It really makes tablet computing or computing in general much more accessible to many more people. And then when you compound or add in iPad OS, which recently just came out, it's very full featured. And it, I think it almost could replace a computer for a large percentage of people out there. I'm saying somewhere maybe 70, 75%. Now, granted, there are gonna be people that will not be able to replace all of their tasks with the iPad, but that might not be the intention, right? The intention might be to replace most of the tasks and still have your computer around when you need to do that computing that's computationally intensive. I mean, I don't know if we'll ever see a point in time where you can do motion graphics or heavy editing on the iPad, but if we do, that's great. I mean, I love to have a more portable editing rig than having to take my computer, connect it to my monitor, connect it to my external drives, connect it to my eGPU, if they, we got to a point where we could do this. I mean, there's mouse support in there, you have the ability to go ahead and do file access. There are a lot of great features, which I think that you might be underestimating why this is gonna be the best computer under $350. I am Mike, and this is Tech 24 Seven TV. Let's get started. As I said in the beginning, I've been using the 10.2 inch iPad as a replacement for my 12.9 inch iPad Pro for about a week now. And I think this is really going to be the default computing experience for many people out there. When you compare it against the sixth generation iPad, there's not a lot that has largely changed. And I think that's the point. Apple felt that the sixth generation iPad was largely a good computing experience for the target demographic that it was going to appealing to. When you add in the functionality where you now have the smart connector, you're really kind of broadening the number of people that are going to go ahead and upgrade into the seventh generation iPad. I mean, people are complaining about the cost of the keyboard being $159 compared to the cost of the iPad at $330. Now, while I understand the perspective that you're saying that the iPad is roughly you know, double the cost of the keyboard, think of it this way. If I were to buy that keyboard today and keep this iPad, you know, keep the iPad seventh generation for you know, three, four, five years, there's a very good chance that after that point in time, I can then upgrade into the iPad Air 3, which is gonna use the same keyboard as it does today. So you're giving people a little bit more longevity in a piece of product or in a product that they own by extending the functionality from one generation of iPads, which is the seventh, you know, seventh generation, into the iPad Air 3, which is a really nice feature because if you think about it, I don't have to then rebuy that keyboard. Now, many people say that the iPad, just because it's running a two-year-old processor from, I think it's 2017 when the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, the iPad is not necessarily gonna be full feature or can handle a majority of tasks. Now, for someone like me, I use my iPad for 70, 80% of my computing tasks because I wanna, again, keep it as light as possible when I'm not at home. It worked fine. I was able to play games. I was able to go ahead and create documents, go ahead and create PowerPoints. I was able to do some light video editing. I mean, this works largely fine. So let's talk about the features of the new 10.2 inch iPad. So, you know, first thing it's in the name, 10.2 inch iPad comparison to the 9.7 inch iPad. It's marginally bigger, uh, but I think it's designed, I think from the aspect to give you or to afford you a better experience when you think about iPad OS. Uh, it still has a lightning port here at the bottom, still has speaker grills at the bottom, doesn't have four channel audio like the newer iPads do. Also on the front, you're gonna have the same Touch ID sensor that you have on the previous generation of iPad. It doesn't afford any you know, faster unlocking experience. Uh, and obviously there's no face ID. You have the same 1.2 megapixel camera here on the front. It doesn't, again, if you're thinking about that, you're gonna be some, some wonderful iPad photographer, this is not the iPad for you, but I think if you're considering this iPad, you're not really thinking that you're an iPad photographer. Uh, on the back here, you have the same eight megapixel camera that's on the uh, on the back. Again, if you know if you're worried about taking photos with your iPad, this is not the, this is not the iPad for you. This is by and large again, it's going to be the same. There's really no difference here. It still has the lightning port. Still has the 3.5 millimeter jack that you see here, which is great. Oh, didn't mean to call that. Which is going to be great for people that need that functionality. Really, the only difference here is going to be the smart dock connector here at the bottom that allows you to connect the keyboard to it and you're, you're off, right? This is the keyboard. And when you open it, now truth be told, this keyboard that I have here, I've had it since 2017 when I bought the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. I've been able to reuse this on, you know, obviously the 10.5 inch iPad Pro, the iPad Air 3, which came out this year, and uh, also this. So I get a lot of reuse out of this. So if you're someone who's kind of debating purchasing 
the keyboard. Think of it this way that if you do purchase it and if you upgrade to a you know another iPad in, in a few years, there is a chance that you might go ahead and be able to reuse that same keyboard, assuming that the iPad keeps the same constraints from a size perspective. So I think it really, yeah, it really comes down to who is this iPad for? Now, when I think about that answer, I think this is really gonna be built for people who are, you know, you might not be new to computing, but you're new to tablet computing, right? You're coming from an old PC, whether it's Mac or Windows, and you want something that's more portable, you want something that's a little bit more personal, you want to use maybe as a media consumption device, maybe this is gonna be for a young teenager or someone who's going off to school for the first time, not just a primary iPad, uh, if you're looking for a secondary iPad to use around the house, in the kitchen, uh, you like I use mine in the studio to write notes. I use it for the teleprompter when I have to take notes. So it's very conformable to many different situations where you could use this. So I think if you're coming from an older iPad, obviously for sure this is a great iPad and you're getting the expanded functionality of adding the keyboard. I would say that this is really at 329, it's designed for many, many, many people. And come the holiday, I think this is gonna sell like hotcakes. You're gonna see this as a gift for a lot of people. So when you think about getting the iPad here, if you have an older iPad, Apple's giving trade-in deals on this. So like for my iPad Air 2, which is broken right now, I'm able to trade that into Apple and I'm gonna get hundred bucks for it, or they'll give me hundred dollars off a new product. So I can do one of two things. Either that's gonna drop the price of this from 339 or 329 down to 229, or I can get actually even more storage from uh, 429 down to 329. I think if you need more than 128 gigs, you, there's no other option. You have to move into the iPad Air 3, which is available at 256 gigs. But if you do end up getting that, you can still use the same keyboard. So again, reusability. And even, you know, I think a couple other things. If you wanted to do, I would say light video editing, maybe using an app like LumaFusion, that certainly would be good. Uh, you now have the ability to connect external storage to this if you wanted to using one of the uh, different dongle accessories from Apple, like the camera connection kit, I believe it's called. It's 29 or $39. And so you can connect like a USB-C drive to that, as long as you can connect power to it as well and go ahead and use it to edit content off of. Again, I think it's it's more tuned to someone's gonna be upgrading from an older iPad. Maybe you're gonna be using this as a second computing device, students, uh, even as a, a media consumption device. This is still a great deal at 329 for the 64 gig. But I wanna know what you think about the new iPad. Are you gonna upgrade to it? And if you are upgrading to it, or what are you upgrading from? I would think that if you are upgrading, it's gonna be something that is pre-iPad Air 2 and not running iPad OS. But again, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Now I have a lot of other iOS and iPad OS content planned, including some comparisons with this and the iPad Air 2. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications to be alerted when that content comes. Now, if you're new here, hey, listen, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you around for the next one. And if you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button. I am Mike and this is Tech 24 7 TV. Hit like, hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.